Was this a test of our faith? And what that means is feel what we're feeling because God has made a way. But believers must be reminded that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I must report to you that I am not well. I have a torn, what something in my in my in my knee. So doctor said I have to take it easy for at least a month. So please, please don't give me any trouble in that month. Allow it to heal. But nothing stops me from preaching the word of God. It, 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 it's a part of me. And I love the word. So I will speak the word of God as he gives utterance. I must thank all of the men, all of the assistants um, who have been very kind in trying to help me around. I have my stick, but I didn't want you to see it. <laughs> Before you wander away into the things which distract you from listening to the word of God on Sundays, I beg you this morning, to listen keenly to the word of God. As we will see the historical situation out of which the birth of Jesus took place and your significance to it. Some people just celebrate without considering the significance of it. There is deep significance to the celebration. The celebration which we have been doing is mainly for Jesus in its adulthood. But the real thing begins before his adulthood. So listen to the word of God today. Try and listen as much as possible. As much as possible. Try and listen so that you will understand your significance in all of this. Today I should speak to you from Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. It reads, together please. For I know the thoughts that I have, that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give to you a future and a hope. To give to you a future and a hope. The topic, joy to the world. The Lord has come. To give you a blessing for the future. The topic, joy to the world. The Lord has come. I'm talking to you today about the fulfillment of Jesus Christ and the blessing that he has in life, had in life for us. From the history of Genesis chapter 1, we know that all human beings are born out of relationship with the Father God. All of us are born out of relationship with the Father God. Consequently, all mankind experiences religious and social discontent. You have to agree that in our society today, you have a lot of discontent. People will have more psychological, people will have terrible psychological problems today even than before. This world is discontent and we are experiencing discontent. 
We're having crisis. Crisis which we don't even understand. But God made man with the gifts and abilities. Despite the discontent, we have one fact. Is that God made man with the gifts and abilities to communicate with one another and to reach a level of understanding between each other. If God didn't give us that gift and ability, you imagine it would be terrible. It would be, it would be war all the time. But despite what is going on, man has been made with a, that gift and ability to communicate with one another. But you have to see, friends, many of us don't even know that. We're not even aware of it. We, well, <laughs> while the celebration was going on, the, the Christmas celebration, I, I thought that many people don't even know what they are celebrating. <laughs> they eat the chicken yeah. and the turkey yeah. and the ham yeah. and the rice and peas. What is this celebration about? They don't even think about it. And that's why I'm begging you this morning. I am begging you in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. And not just the young people. All the ones listen. Hear a little bit. Because today's message is not an ordinary message. It's historical and it relates to you and what Jesus Christ has done. The basis of that understanding is called his love. The basis of understanding is called God's love. That's what God wants you to achieve. Remember he said, I promise you something. I'm going to give you hope. But you must understand the hope what I'm talking about, which is based on love. God chose and equipped the Jewish people. Now listen carefully. God chose and equipped the Jewish people from among other nations. There were many nations existing. But God chose one nation to represent him. God's purpose was for them, listen to the purpose and see what's happening. God's purpose was for them to worship him and to fulfill his mission of proclaiming his love to the world. That's why God made and chose the Israelites, this nation, not because of their good looks and not because their money full expectations. God chose one nation because he wanted one to proclaim his word and to fulfill his will of letting the people know and the world knows of his love because man was born separated from God and the love is to bring us back together like parents and children having been separated from another having lived in malice but God made provision to bring them back together. Let's read 1 Peter 2 and verse 9. Listen now. 1 Peter 2 and verse 9. We're talking about why God chose the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel. Let's read. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So that is why God chose Israel because he could only use, he in his plan could only use one nation. But remember, God has a purpose for the nation. My friends, God has a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for your life. 
God is a purposeful person. Purposeful. But like their fathers, like Israel's fathers, they struggled in their loyalty to God's standard. They struggled to keep the standard of God. They know where they were going, but they struggled, just like you. Many of you are Christians, all of us, many of us are Christians, but we still fail. We sin. We don't speak right, don't think right. Parents against children, children against parents, not because we want it, but because we are failing creatures. So Israel failed to standard of God in maintaining that peacefulness between people. All, remember I talk about the Jewish people, Jewish and Israel, the same thing. All who were not born Jews automatically came under this special covenant with God. Remember they are Jews, Jewish people, and other people were not Jewish. They were called Gentiles. So you're a Gentile. You are a Gentile. You are a Gentile. All who were born or born Jews automatically came under this special covenant with God. Listen. When Paul became converted and understood the character of God, Paul asked in Romans 3, verse 29, let's hear what he asked. Paul was a Jew. But Paul saw certain situations. He began to experience certain kind of practices. He asked, or is he the God of Jews only? Is, is he the God of the Jews only? Because you see, when Paul saw that he knew that Israel was chosen by God. And he thought, well, when he, when he saw certain things that I'm going to relate to you. He said, well, is he the God of the Jews only? Or is he not the God of Gentiles too? And there is significance in why he asked that. Listen to the significance. When some individuals or groups are chosen to a position of honor, pride and prejudice tend to fill their hearts. When certain individuals are chosen and equipped and given the honor of social class, pride and prejudice tend to get in their minds. That is what happened to Israel. That's why Paul asked, is he not the God of Gentiles as well because sometimes <laughs> well, well in Jamaica we used to say I, well I don't know if I should say it. Um, let me say it to myself not to you Negroes can't stand success some of the things people say Negroes can't stand success. But it's like the Jews couldn't stand success. So God spoke. Huh? It's not racial. It, it's not racial. All right, all right. But you, you, can, you can forgive me. Forgive me if you want to. But if you don't want to forgive me, that's all right. What we are saying, friends, some of us cannot stand success. But the fact is this, God designed some of us for that success. Sometimes it's funny to see we come from nothing. 
But we are getting to somewhere. God provides for us. And it's shocking. Israel, Paul was, was shocked to realize that the Gentiles were also people of God. So, the Jews made special laws or rules such as circumcision. The Jews, they're big. They're chosen by God. So they take over. They made rules and laws which mainly governs them and separates the Gentiles from even realizing that God was for them as well. The Jews made these laws, some of which circumcision, circumcision means like a branding. You see the, the, the many young men, uh, older men are going around with branding. What's the, what's the term for it? Huh? Tattoo. Tattoo. They are branded. They are branded and some of it, some of it is um, permanent. Some of it is very, very permanent. And, and, and some of it, the Jews, when they had that kind of thing, they, it was identity. The Jews wore these branding tattoos for special identification. So wherever you see them, you know they are Jews. You see, the Jews went to all ends to show that they are the people of God. It's funny, sometimes we behave that way. That we are the only people of God. Sometimes Christians behave that way. Sometimes non-Christians even behave that way. People, my friends, God is a wonderful God. Let's read. Even today, even today, some of those practices are being imposed being imposed which cater to their, their own righteousness and not God's righteousness. Sometimes we make rules and laws which big us up and let down the other people. So natural thing is going to be one of the natural behavior patterns is going to be discrimination. Discrimination. Let's read Romans 3, verses 27 to 29. Read it, please. Where is boasting then? Where is boasting? It is excluded. God did not intend for the Jews to be boasting about anything, but to be servants of God. But what? What the law, by what law did they boast? Or works? No. But by the law of faith. That is the only, the only law, only thing you should boast about is the acceptance of faith in Jesus Christ. That's all we have to boast about. Not our education, not our moneyfulness, not our poverty. Not all gratefulness, not anything else. But the only value that man should really, really boast about is that now they are children of God rather than sinners going down to hell. That's what should be our joy. Let's read 28. Therefore, we conclude that man is justified by faith from the deeds of the law. In other words, they were imposing the law. Do this, do that, eat this, eat that. And they were identifying themselves as being different. But Paul said, and he understood. What is that all about? What is that all about? The, 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 it's not what you eat that makes you become a Christian. It's not what you eat make you become a, a, a son of God. It's not what you eat and drink. It's by commitment of your faith to Jesus Christ. 
And even today, some of, some of it is going, still going on. But we're not worried about that. You must worry about your faith in Jesus Christ. Don't worry, don't worry about what they do. Worry about what you do. And you are a child of God if you commit yourself to him. Therefore, we conclude, man is justified only by faith. The word justified means declared. Declared to be free only when Jesus comes in your heart. So you can keep your money, keep your beauty, keep everything else. But remember one thing is meaningful in terms of your God is relationship to God. I don't know if you understand, if you see, and if you figure that there are so many tragedies that are taking place these days. So many tragedies, so many negatives are going on. And we heard one of the last things as is, is in, in New York, as somewhere in New York. Uh, I, I, don't, 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 don't take the place. Don't take me for the place. Don't quote me. But a young man with his girlfriend driving a boost up car. No matter where it takes place, it takes place everywhere. <laughs> takes place everywhere. Not thinking about life enough. And the result was fatal for both of them. My friends, you've got to stop and think. You don't, your youthfulness, no, does not mean permanence. Your youthfulness is, is a challenge because you have to prepare for adulthood. That means Jesus Christ needs to be in the plans. Because you plan, but Jeremiah said, I have plans for you. I have plans for you. And that hope, that plan has hope in it. There is hope in Jesus Christ. Only that, that, oh, that real hope is in Jesus Christ. So whereas you enjoy yourself and do all you may want to do, but think, think, Think you are not the controller of your life. You are the absolute controller of your life. It's significant to regard Jesus Christ as a part of your life. The Jews were chosen for a special purpose. They were to be light and salt of the world. We have been talking about that. Special reason. This church is called and chosen and raised for a special purpose. Your life is made for a special purpose. Every one of us has a purpose. So as we celebrate, what are we celebrating? Do we consider our value in the world? We are Gentiles. I'm going to speak a little more on that. Their developed religious discontent and a rift between the Jews and the Samaritans. Samaritans were also Gentiles. So I told you that uh, of the boastfulness of Israel, which developed into a rift, a tear between the Jews and the Samaritans. So much so, so much so. It was said, Jews and Samaritans have no dealing with one another. Jews and Samaritans have no dealing with one another. Isn't it, isn't it hurtful by God for God to see the people whom he called and chose to have malice? with another set of people 
whom he created. What about today? Is there any malice going on between nations? Is there any cruelty going on between nations? You can find that the verdict is yours. The social and religious, social and religious people yearn for a savior because of what was going on. And we today are yearning for peace and love. So we are not like, not any different from those before Jesus came. We yearn for a savior. We, learn, we yearn for a Messiah. You yearn for a Messiah in your home. You yearn for a Messiah on your job. You yearn for a Messiah in your community because it appears as though nobody is in charge. It appears as though no one is in charge in the home. Do you realize that today children behave as though they are in charge? And adults want to be in charge but they say, Lord my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> Nowadays, children up to, up to eight, it used to be 21. <laughs> children up to eight years of age are in charge. What they want, they have to get. Where they want to go, they have to go. Children at 16, 17, no have boyfriend, they have husband and wife. It's, that's it. That's the reality of what's going on. And the parents, you ask the parents, they say, what me go and do about it? You cannot do much. Society grabs them. I, I said recently that society takes our children and give them a little, a little, a little job for to pay them $10 an hour. And when they begin to get the money, then they forget school. They forget school. Now they think that they are in charge. Now before, before you know it, 18, 19, and 20, they live together with somebody. They're not, they're not considering their future. That's the situation that was going on. I am not condemning these kids because society has made them that way. It's not them who make it. Society makes them. So little John, when they reach eight and nine, by 10 they say, I want a job. They don't want an education. They want a job. Not realizing you get the job at 18. But at 40 and 45 years of age, you look back and said, oh my God, this is where I reach. Thanks be unto God, there are some who are pushing ahead. Young people are pushing ahead. And I trust God, I trust to God that the young people of this church will hear the word of God and don't think of just now. Think of the future. And so, there developed religious discontent and rift between the Jews and Samaritans. It was said, the Jews have no dealing with the Gentiles. The social and religious yearns for a savior, a messiah. We want, a, maybe you want a messiah right in your house. Yeah, you want a savior. We all do. As grandparents, there's a difference sometimes we see between what's going on now and what used to go on. And it's not money. It's probably, the problem is not money. The problem is who is in charge of our society? Who is in charge for young people? It's a culture. It's a culture which is developing. And, and, and uh, you, you, you have nice 
Maybe now you dedicate and so on and so forth. Well, give you 10 more years with that baby. They take over and they want to run their lives. And so, my friends, the term messianic hope was developed. The term messianic hope was developed out of a situation in Israel. Turn to Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. Messianic hope. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. I know nobody. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. There shall be no end upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it, to establish it with justice and judgment. The world then reached the point that things have gotten so much out of hand that they longed for a savior because they didn't see anybody who was really in charge. And so my friends, there comes our hope. There comes our joy. There comes our, our, our peace. There comes relationship between the father and the mother, the children and others. There comes a hope of joy and happiness. And so it was joy. It was joy to the world. When Jesus was born, it was joy. He was, though they didn't understand all that was going on, but it was joy to the world. The Lord was hopefully coming in amidst the, the misery that they lived in and we live in now. Because we are living in misery, um, uh, uh, socially, spiritually and all that. Unless you're a child of God, you don't understand what God said. Do all that's going on, I have plans for you. Thanks be unto God. He has planned for us. He has planned. And I know he has planned for us. He has planned. So now, the second aspect, that's the misery of a society in which Jesus Christ was born. And it's happened then, and it's happening now. Yes. Let's look at the orientation and call of Jesus Christ. That which we are celebrating. That all I said before happened before he was born. And it's rather interesting that tremendous history developed after Jesus Christ was born. Matthew 2 13 and 14. Read please. Matthew 2, 13 and 14. Now when they are departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. The angel of the Lord appeared in a dream saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and there stay until I bring you word. For Herod is seeking the young child, destroy him. 
You know, when God revealed this message to me, I said, Jesus, I can't, I, I can't even rejoice again. I, I am sorry for myself and my generation and mankind. Jesus brings hope. Jesus coming with hope. But Herod, Herod is seeking to kill him. Herod is seeking to, to kill the one who we longed for to bring peace. Herod is seeking to kill him. As a missionary, talk about a missionary. A missionary is one who is endorsed by a church to go into an area to carry on evangelism or activities as education and hospital work. So a missionary called by a church or organization to go out to carry on the work of God in a situation. Some of these areas are terribly, terribly hostile to Christianity. Many missionaries, uh, well, the, the, the Southern Baptist Convention, Southern Baptist Convention, we give 10% of the money received in this church to the Southern Baptist Convention. We give 10%. You see, we ask you, we tell you, we use the Bible and we say tithe to the church. But the church is also, has, also has to tithe. And we tithe to our parent company, the Southern Baptist Convention. And the Southern Baptist Convention has over 5,000 missionaries throughout the world who are serving the denomination and God. And as I told you, some of the places are hostile. But we give to God's work. And it's a pleasure to give. And every month, every month, we give 10%, at least 10% to the Southern Baptist Convention to, to maintain the services of the denomination. Yes, clap. Because you don't realize that when you give one cent, that one cent doesn't stay here. One cent is spread all over. And some people don't give to church. I said, church don't need any money. Well, we forgive them on the grounds of ignorance. Because God depends on us to do his work. In the same way, God chose Israel, the Jews, to do his work. Many missionaries, as I told you before, serve in places and circumstances that are hostile to Christianity. They are there, but you don't know because they don't, they don't necessarily carry on the activities that you see. They don't preach. In, in, they, they don't preach. They are. They are. They don't preach because of hostility. Jesus was one such missionary. Jesus was one such missionary who accepted a call to bring salvation to a dangerous world. Our world is sometimes dangerous, some places, dangerous. Jesus was a missionary called by God to serve in dangerous world. He was born, listen carefully now friends. Jesus was born in Bethlehem among his own people. But he received the official call and orientation as a missionary in a different land. 
The land was Egypt. He was born in Bethlehem. But he was, he had to run away to Egypt for orientation and the call. Do you realize that? You see, we don't, we don't, we don't hear about that in, in our celebration. We don't hear about that. We celebrate as though everything is all right. Jesus Christ was a missionary. And he came to save the world. But his job included running away. Read, we're going to read, um, we're going to read again. Um, <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to read again a passage, Matthew 2, 13 and 14. Read Matthew 13 and 14. Matthew 2, 13 and 14 again. Uh, we have technical problems. Matthew 2, 13 and 14. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Saying, arise, take the young child and his mother and flee to Egypt. Flee to Egypt. Not making a reservation. You know, you make reservation to go places and so on. Flee into Egypt. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. That is your historical situation. That is where we are coming from. That's the relationship that existed between your forefathers. And now, Jesus had to run to save his life. And so, my friends, he was born in Bethlehem. But he could not stay in Bethlehem. Last week or week before, Reverend Dean said, sometimes it's hard to stay among your relatives. It's hard to live among your relatives because you think your relatives would love you more. Your relatives hate you sometimes because of J.E. Jealousy. Oh, you don't think that you, your relatives are jealous about you? Check your family. You may find some jealousy right there among your people. The nature. I, the, I am going to tell you a few reasons. I don't have much time, but I want to tell you a few reasons why there, were, there was problems why Jesus had to flee to Egypt. I told you already that Herod was a terrible man. Herod was a ruthless character. Herod was a ruthless character. He was, a, 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 but he wasn't a gunman. But what he was, I don't know what. He was a sword man. Jesus, a Bethlehemite, he's seeking the sword. He's giving Jesus Christ his sword. Jealousy in our hearts. And jealousy is a cousin to ignorance can reach the level of rage and wickedness. Jealousy in our hearts can reach the level of rage and wickedness. It may not be your family, but it may be your family. Be careful of jealousy. That's why Herod was seeking the young child to kill him. 
Jesus, Jesus, look my friends, Jesus did not want to be king. Jesus did not want to be king. Why? Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. It's only ignorance of Herod why he was jealous for Jesus Christ. Check your home. Sometimes you're jealous of your people for nothing. Secondly, because of the nature of Jesus' birth, that's why he was rejected. Jesus was born not in a hotel or hospital. He was born in a stable. This boy born in a stable, not equal with me. Be, be, be very careful. Be, care, be very careful because these days the money you have and the, the strength you have and all of that is fading. So your hope can't be in the money. Jesus was born as stable. But it's not where you were born. It's who was born. Do you not say amen at all? It's who not where you were born. If you check, I don't, have, I don't have time. If you check, many of your relatives, they look at your kids and the situation in which they were born and where they reach now, they say, God, thank you. Yeah. Remember, your physical limitation and your human standards, remember that. But God moves in a mysterious way. His wonders to perform. God can twist things. God can raise you. God can elevate you. Because he's God. He's a God of all gods. And that's what he did. I'm going to rush on. Egypt, the third, the third reason, the first one, the nature of his birth. I'm, I'm telling you now about Egypt. Egypt had a positive history or reputation. Why God sent him to Egypt? Because Egypt has a reputation, a history. Go to Egypt. Run away to Egypt. Egypt had a reputation. Africa had secrets of successful culture and was known to be very accommodative. That's why Jesus said, go Africa. Many of us don't even think, don't even remember that Egypt is in Africa. And, and God said, go, put him there, go there. You see, God is dealing with a child, not the adult, the child. And that child needs comfort. That child needs grace. That child needs love. Joseph was welcomed and treated well and respectful when he was sold to Egypt. So Egypt has reputation, good reputation. Look, my friends, your reputation decides your destiny. Who you are decide who you're going to be. Reputation. Israel had a tremendous, uh, Egypt had a tremendous uh, re reputation. Where it is, what's your reputation? Are you concerned about reputation? You're not, you're not concerned. The, you, yes, you're doing what you're doing now. But remember, what you are doing now relates to what you will do later. Reputation is very important. I'm going to close. Sorry I have to close, but I have to close. I'm going to go to the last point. Um, what, what are we talking about? Why God rushed them to Egypt. That Egypt represents you, your family. 
where you were born, and all that, as I said before. The last thing. Children gravitate to love. We're talking about why he had to go to Egypt, not stay in Bethlehem among his own people. Children gravitate to love. The environment of love softens the process of orientation. The environment of love softens, softens, softens the process of orientation. I don't have time to go into it, but the love of you, the love of, of environment helps children in studying. It, it's, it's what, where they are studying, the environment is very important. The environment is good. When it is good, it, 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 you, you know, uh, um, their brain does open up because they reflect upon home. They reflect on mama and papa and all the rest. They, they reflect upon love. If they don't have love, they're in trouble. Jesus' situation regarded, required acceptance and encouragement. We're going to close by saying God had planned that the hospitality of Egypt would bring hope to the Jewish listen. God planned the hospitality of Egypt to bring hope to the Jewish child. The Jewish child. But God planned for an Egyptian to bring them up. And my friends, I hope that you can see that God moves in mysterious ways. That God knows who we are and what we are. And God is not going to give you more than he really wants to give you. But if you put your trust in Jesus Christ, if you have hope in him, what he has planned for you will happen. So Jeremiah says, I have a plan for you. A plan that will bring blessing and not cursing. God planned Jesus Christ to bring him to this world. And though we would reject him and kill him, but God's plan was he brings life. And out of darkness comes evil. You Christians, you Christians are God's salt preserving and God's light giving hope. May God bless you.